Good morning, everybody, and Merry Christmas. I hope that your week and your weekend have been going well. And, you know, it's a little bit different today, but as our, our mission statement of our church says to broadcast Jesus, we thought this would be a great opportunity to broadcast the truth of Christmas and the truth of Jesus in all of our homes and elsewhere uh, this morning. So uh, let me just pray and uh, we'll get in the Word together this morning. So, Father, I... I just come before you today, and even in the just all of the events of the holidays and everything that goes on, and the, just the, the fun that we have, Lord, I pray that through all of that, that we would just come here now to see your Son, Jesus, to recognize this moment in history where he stepped out of heaven and came down to this earth to save us. Lord, I pray you would prepare our minds and prepare our hearts to just learn and just, just take hold of the gravity of that truth today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week, uh, when we gathered for church, we did kind of a lead-in to where we are at today. Uh, we had a, a, a teaching last week that I titled simply, Hope. And we took the time last week to look all the way back to the Garden of Eden, where, unfortunately, Adam and Eve sinned. And in their sin, they, they broke mankind's relationship with God. And since then, every single one of us has been born into a sin problem and a broken relationship with God. But right in the wake of Adam and Eve's sin, right after that happened, even when everything looked hopeless because sin messed everything up, even then, God spoke hope into the situation and said that one day, someone was going to come and deal with these problems. And from that point, the promise continued. It's what we looked at last week. It was spoken to Abraham. It was spoken to King David. It was said that one born from this family line would come and bless every other family on earth. And these promises were held on to. They were spoken of. They were passed on from generation to generation for thousands of years. Eventually, God used men like Isaiah and Malachi to prophesy, to really speak the future of what this one that was coming would be like and what he was going to do. Isaiah said that he was coming to deal with our sin problem, and that's exactly what we needed more than anything else in this world. But after God spoke through these prophets, after he spoke through Malachi, at that point, Things went quiet for about 400 years. Can you imagine waiting for something for 400 years? Kids, I hope you, you're here with your parents right now, but kids, how hard has it been to wait even just this last few weeks to get to Christmas? It was probably really hard, wasn't it? But could you imagine waiting even a month for something or a year, five years, 10 years? 10 years might be longer than you, you've been here. Can you imagine waiting and never getting to see the thing that you were waiting for? Sin is the biggest problem that people have ever faced because sin will stop us from ever getting to be with God and ever having a relationship with him. That's a terrible thing to never get to have. And so I'm sure, again, as we looked at last week, that through all of these hundreds and even thousands of years of people waiting, that there were kids hearing these stories from their parents and from the people around them of the one that was coming to fix this huge problem. They had hope in something that, wasn't going to, that was going to happen one day in the future. And that's what they held on to through all of these years for all of those families. And we get to have hope too. But the amazing thing is that we don't have to wait for it anymore. And it's only because of what we celebrate today on Christmas. Today we celebrate the fact that after all of the waiting, Jesus Christ was born. And I want to read about that right out of the Bible. 
We're going to read, we're actually going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 1 again, and we're going to read the story of Jesus' birth. So if you would, turn with me. I'll give you a moment. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Matthew chapter 1 and read the story of Jesus' birth. I'll give you a moment. But we're going to be in Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 18. So Matthew 1, 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary to be your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. As we start this passage, we find out about a couple named Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph were preparing to get married. But God had chosen Mary to be the one that would give birth to the newborn baby Jesus. And you know, this is a crazy situation. Like, this isn't something that happens every day. In fact, it's only happened this once. And God miraculously put baby Jesus inside of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. Nobody has ever had to walk in these shoes before. And Joseph, Joseph's kind of trying to figure out what to do in this situation. But we see in verse 20 there, that while Joseph is trying to work these things out, he must have fallen asleep. And then an angel shows up in his dream and tells him exactly what is going on here. He says that you can go ahead and you can, you can take Mary to be your wife still. He says that the baby inside of Mary was put there by the Holy Spirit. He says that Mary is going to give birth to a son and that they need to name him Jesus. And you, and you might ask, you know, why Jesus? Why name him Jesus? Because the angel tells Joseph the truth and says that he is going to save his people from their sins. That's exactly what everyone has been waiting for. And it's exactly what we need. Jesus' name literally means the Lord is salvation. Or even simpler, God saves. Just like he promised. Because God always keeps his promises. Just like he promised, God has come to rescue his people. And so Joseph woke up. He now knew exactly what was going on, and he did what the angel told him to do. They called the baby Emmanuel, and they named him Jesus. Emmanuel, which means God with us, and Jesus, which means God saves. If you put those two things together, it gives us a really basic understanding of what exactly is happening at this moment. This is the moment where everything changes for mankind. Last week we talked about the hope that was carried through all of these generations waiting for this moment. Today we see that hope fulfilled in Jesus Christ. God the Son, Jesus Christ, had left the glory of heaven and come down to earth to be with us, to walk in our shoes, and ultimately to deal with our problems. Kids, everyone that's listening, this isn't just a storybook story that we like to read each year. This is the true story, the history, the moment when real hope arrived in person 
on earth. And right now, he was just a little baby. A little baby born into very humble circumstances. And I want to read a little bit more of his story. But we're going to move over to the Gospel of Luke now to do that. And it's just two books over in the Bible. We're going to move over to Luke chapter 2. And again, I will give you a moment to get there. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2. And in Luke chapter 2, we're going to pick up in verse 7. So Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 7. And we're going to read down to verse 20. And it says, And she brought forth her firstborn son. Mary gave birth to Jesus and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were, some, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And so it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at these things, which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. I said a minute ago that Jesus was born into very humble circumstances. You see in verse 7 that, that Mary and Joseph had tried to find a room at the inn, or for us these days, or like a, a hotel or a motel. But there was no room for them in the inn. And so they ended up finding what must have been like an animal shed or a barn or something like that. Because when Jesus is born, it says that they laid him in a manger, which is just another word for an animal feeding trough. It's the thing that you throw the food into for the animals to come and eat out of. Jesus wasn't born in a hospital. He wasn't even born in a nice room in the inn. Jesus was born in basically an animal shed and laid in a feeding trough. This was God. He's, he's King. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's the hope for all of mankind. And he came humble, really humble. But while Jesus is lying in this manger that night, in this animal shed, there is an angel appearing to shepherds in the fields nearby. And the angel delivers to them the news that probably their family, their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, and so on for years and years have been so anxiously waiting for, that today in Bethlehem, the Savior has been born. And right as they received this news, more angels appeared. And they were all praising God right in front of these guys. The angels said that Jesus was born, that he was in Bethlehem. And so the shepherds took off. It says that they went with haste. I mean, they were probably running with this news. And they found Mary and Joseph and Jesus there lying in the manger. And they now knew what we need to know. That this Jesus that we're talking about this morning, this Jesus is God. He is Christ. He is Lord. He is the Messiah. He is Savior. He is the Savior that has come to save us all. These shepherds had the opportunity to see Emmanuel, God with us, or Jesus, 
God saves right there in person, right in front of them. And when they left from Jesus that night, they were so excited. And they went and they told everyone they possibly could all about him. All of human history had been waiting for this moment, and they just got to see him. There's more to this part of the story. There's more to the story of Jesus' birth. There, there's more events that happen. There's, there's crazy things that happen with the people that didn't like Jesus. There's even other people that came to visit him other than the shepherds. And it's an incredible story. It's why we celebrate Christmas. But while the history of Jesus' birth is absolutely amazing and it's extremely important, it's the centerpiece of our Christmas celebration today. But it's also not the entire story. Jesus didn't save us just by showing up. He's going to grow up. He's going to live. He's going to teach He's going to lead people. He's going to show us his ways. But about 33 years after his birth, he's going to give up his life on a cross because of all of our sin. As I said at the beginning, our sin will stop us from ever being with God. But Jesus came And Jesus said, I will take all of their sin on me. I will take the punishment or I will get in trouble for their sin so that they don't have to. Your sin will be nailed to that cross with me. And he gave up his life to save us. They took his body off of the cross. They even put it in a tomb They put it in this tomb for three days, but three days later, Jesus came back to life. He walked out of that tomb. And now that he is alive, he has called us to turn away from the sinfulness. Turn away from the sinfulness that we all have. He's called us to believe in what he has done to save us. Remember, he is Lord. He is Savior. And he's now not just the hope to wait for, he is hope fulfilled. There is absolutely nothing stopping any of us from talking to him today. The amazing thing is that God can hear us anytime and anywhere. He can hear us whether we're young or whether we're older. We have the opportunity to just stop and talk to him, and we can tell him, like, we don't want to be about this sin anymore. I want to be with you, Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins, and that you are now alive, and I want to follow you, because you are Lord, and you are my Savior, and I want to be with you forever. Salvation from sin and a relationship with God, it's a free gift for all of us because Jesus came down here to deal with our sin problem. Jesus bought the gift, bought and paid for. It's absolutely free. It's the best gift we could possibly get today or ever. And so for us today, the reason that we celebrate Christmas is extremely important. It's great to have fun with family and friends. It's even great to maybe get some gifts. And while this has become part of the celebration of Christmas, let's please, please, please make sure that we don't miss the incredible truth of God coming down to save us in the middle of all of the other things. Because all of these other things, as great as they are, they are very small things compared to that. Today we celebrate God stepping out of heaven, coming as a child that will eventually die for us, all of his people. And his coming is why we celebrate Christmas today. Let's pray.
Father, I am so thankful. I'm so thankful that we're not waiting anymore. I'm so thankful that we have our hope truly fulfilled in your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray you would move in all of our hearts and our minds today to even just resettle the gravity of this truth in our hearts. May it not get lost in all of the other things. Lord, if we don't know you, if any of us don't know you, I pray you would captivate our hearts, grab hold of our hearts. Teach us this truth. Show us our sin. Show us that your son came down here to save us. He ultimately died for us. Lord, I pray that you would be with our families. You would be with our situations. I pray even as we look forward to this new year, would you all the more just draw us to yourself to follow you completely. Lord, I thank you for this day. and ask you to bless the rest of it as we enjoy this time together. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, as you, as you go about your day today, I pray that you enjoy it. Obviously, speak on these things. Talk to your children. Talk to the people around you. Let us remember and speak of these wonderful truths that we have in Jesus Christ. I pray that we do that. I pray that we would encourage one another these things, especially to our kids and all of the other things that are going on, that this would be the center point. And with that, we love you guys. If anybody has questions about Jesus or about anything else, please never hesitate to ask. As I said at the beginning, our goal here is to broadcast and talk about Jesus in every way that we possibly can. And we'd love to have that conversation about him. But talk to him about, or with the people around you as well. And again, we love you. I hope you have a great rest of your day today, and we'll see you soon.